Lecture on Native American Wisdom Health The Shaman The Creator From 1st of May 2018 Translated by Rua Ezekiel Narrated by Daniel Ken Native American Wisdom Lecture 1 Health First Idea for Contemplation Love Lecture 2 The Shaman Second Idea for Contemplation The Creator Lecture 3 Wisdom Third Idea for Contemplation let us do our protective formula. Native American Wisdom Lecture 1 Learn to create colours with your actions. Learn to interact with the wellspring, with the bird, with the animal, with the flower, with the sun. These are things which are primordially within you. One Native American says, We were chasing the butterflies in order to become enduring and to gain their swiftness. As a whole, everything in nature is a school. We prayed that the butterflies pass on to us a part of their power. You know that the butterflies, these are the souls. The caterpillar, this is the body. And we learn many things from animals. They have very big experience. You know that there are dogs which can sense another dog from 15 kilometers away. We sometimes cannot sense what is going on from 2 meters away. Dogs have such abilities. And not only dogs. I have said, neither saints nor sages can produce honey. This is a secret science of the bees, passed on by the ancestors, a concealed science. Others can only eat it afterwards. The bees extract it. They see it. They interact with the flowers. They have a secret, intimate world together. And Muhammad says, God has taught them a deep secret science. Learn to interact with the sun, because the Creator has invested it into your heart. Your heart is the home of the sun. If you want to grow spiritually, embrace both joy and and sorrow. You know that it is easy to embrace joy, but sorrow must also be embraced, because it is part of the way. They are a part of the unity of life, and they must not be separated. In this world we grow through mistakes, through sufferings. In this way Humanity learns through sorrows. What sorrow brings, happiness cannot give at all. Happiness is poor. Seek your solitude, because there peace is built. When the wind is the mightiest, it whirls in a circle. Birds also look for the circle. They make their nest circular. I have explained. The first figure that God drew was the circle. And the Master says, In the moment when I pronounce a divine thought, it is a circle. The deepest things were made to move in a circle by the force. In the power of the circle, 
Arabic wisdom is instilled. Say the Native Americans, never lose the purity of your heart, because through this purity it withstands the storms of life. The wise one walks in the world, but they live with a sharp eye in the Creator, because they are captivated only by Him. Thoughts of light are lightness of the wind within us. I would only like to add here, a passing thought may enter your head sometimes, just a thought, one being, and drag your whole life away. Just one thought, not two. This means what awakenedness is required to know what to allow how to meet it, and how to set God in motion within yourself. Thoughts of light are old birds who are friends of our heart. Thoughts of light are old friends who come to us again. Truth is within us when it comes from our depths, from our essence. All forms in the world are masks which the spirits put on. Guard the quiet within yourself, because it is your ancient home. Every person who has a deep quiet within themselves can overcome all heavy occurrences in the world, including catastrophes. The quiet is the secret place of God within the person. In anciency, the quiet was considered the supreme quiet, to be the secret name of God. The pure spirit lives with their deep reverence towards things. For the pure spirit, every day is beautiful to live and beautiful to die. If your striving is pure, you will create suns around yourself and within yourself. If you master your passions, they turn into your strength. Words have turned into a sea, into a river, into a wellspring, into a mountain, into wind, into water, and into power. These are all words, uttered words, in order to teach us and guide us. Learn to dance with the hardships if you want to walk towards the Creator. If, at night, a heavy spirit is bothering you, get up and create within your heart a rainbow. In this beautiful lightness you will remain alone, because the heavy spirit does not understand this lightness. Saturate your thoughts with life if you want to fly free as the eagle. Accept the storm as a spirit ally, and then it will preserve you within itself. For you, it will be a guardian spirit. For the wise one, the storm is a friend. It is like a garden with flowers. They simply have another approach, another acceptance, completely different perception. Everyone has within themselves the ability to grow spiritually. In the wind, another wind is concealed. Wisdom teaches us to charge ourselves from a higher source. One shaman says, I want to know what holds you together on the inside when everything else has left you. Where is your support? Do you have the support when everything has left you, including God? I have given this aphorism from the elders, one of them who says, When you lose the support of your life, gain certitude. This is the approach. Health First idea for contemplation What the Native Americans say of health. 
is not difficult to heal the person. It is enough to surround them with your love and to penetrate into them. Then the sickness, which is a living being, will feel this love and it will back away. Turn the ill person into something very important for yourself and let your love flow towards them. The mightiest healing power, no comparison with other powers. This is the supreme power before the universe, and this is why the Native Americans emphasize it. This is the secret of healing. Forget the rest of the world and send the rays of your love upon the sick person. You know when the person is ill, who do they want to see? The one who loves them most. They may want to see the doctor a little and some other people, but they want to see the person of love the most, because there, secretly, this energy flows which raises them from within. The power that heals, this is the loving power within you. The radiating love is the most acting healing power. What penetrates into everything is love. Its rays know no boundaries. The sickness is a masked spirit who runs away from the loving power. The deep loving feeling always flows as a pure stream, as pure joy. True love is the overflowing of pure water from one person to the other. Whoever can immerse into themselves, they are healed from their illness easier. The illness is a robber. If you can immerse within, seek your source. The sickness will teach you some lessons and you will learn some yourself as well. Always seek inner healing and on the outside, whatever comes. Do the deepest thing internally and on the outside, sometimes a doctor is admissible. Sometimes they are not admissible. Every cruel soul always falls very heavily ill because it loses its allies. The ally is a supporter of the life force. Whoever has love towards a sick soul, they can awaken its ally and resurrect the soul. First, love is the mightiest ally. It is always within the power. It is always within God. Love is an invariably acting power. If you enfold the illness with love, the illness begins to disappear. A bad sign is the place where love cannot enter. You must enfold the sickness in such a way so that it shines as a sun. These are Native American methods. Unite with your ally, which could be many things. For example, healing word. Like the Master has said, I will be healed. Simple words, repeat them thousands and millions of times, and do not ask, do not converse, do not ask why, just repeat. Words are living beings. The ally may be an item or a symbol. It may be a pyramid. It may be the Om symbol. It may be a phoenix. Whatever it is, a favorite animal, from it help flows. It may be a bird. Act with perseverance. The measure in eating also determines the inflow of life forces. I have said, less food gives more energy. Whoever truly desires to mend themselves, they are able to believe in their healing. 
Love. Lecture 2. Within you is the place of the biggest love. For you to love, there is no other place. Love is within you from ancient times, and you must never lose it. If love is within you, every moment will come to you as sunrise. If you look at nature with reverence, your eyes will be a mirror of love, a mirror of the Creator. The Creator has given us freedom so that we do things with love. Love has no past and future. It is always here within our heart and it always shines. It is love that upholds and strengthens creation. Love is our eternity, and there is no other eternity. Wrap yourself in the quiet of love, and you will know the secrecy of the unuttered joy. If you understand one animal, it will give you both its love and its power. Love is the purest power within the person. It was given to the person so that they may save the beings. Without love you have no wings. Then where will your soul fly to? Without love you are as a fish cast out on the shore. Only love can enlighten your silence. Only love can take away the noise from your silence simply because not every silence is wisdom. Some think that silence is gold. The Master says, fish are silent too, but they are not wise. Love is something much deeper than the universe and the world, and we have descended in order to understand this. If you do not have love, for you it will always be winter, if you do have love, winter becomes soft. If the Creator has given you a beloved person, this is so that you may convey the love of the Creator towards them. Life gives us much more than what is apparent. A big reward in life is to find the right answers. Love is the first feeling of ancientcy the most ancient feeling. Love means the complete breath of life. Love is boundless, but when we do not love, life becomes brief, short. Love loves freedom, but religion does not love free beings. Love, this is the living connection of the person with the boundlessness, with the deep. We are able to understand our ancient boundlessness only through love. Only love can unite us with its inner secret, the boundlessness. Love is more ancient than humanity and than religion. I will explain. Religion has missed love and it chases this relation. When and how it will achieve it, this is another matter. It is not religion that is important. It is love that is important. Only love can penetrate into the secret of life, because love itself is the secret itself. The ancientcy is love, and not history. Love is not connected to history, but to the ancientcy. It is connected to the priests, to the primordial beings. History, this is the fallen beings. The word itself, history, means a fall and from it you cannot learn. 
it is never right to learn from history. You must learn from truth. This is where the right experience will come from. History. This is the locked beings. And the priest is free through love, through their ancient-sea. Love has always been present in ancient sea, because it is a part of it. It is an essence of ancient sea. And society is something separated. It has separated from love, and from here all tragedies start. They flow in abundance. You can hear every day one friend of mine who comes up with aphorisms say, I love to watch the news. Many catastrophes, many things, and only this way I am able to go to sleep peacefully. Otherwise I cannot. Love is the ancient lost essence and power, and evil only exists as a game which must restore love. The priest is a being who has outlived the future. They do not await a future. A person who is living within God, they are not interested in future and past, in a deeper sense, even in the present, because the present is not important either. Only God is important. So they have outlived the future, because they live within this love, and in the so-called third wellspring. The Native Americans say, in the secret of life there are three wellsprings. The first one, water, the outward outpouring love. As you know, love, water, is the replacement of God on earth. The second, love, the inner wellspring, the essence. And third, God, the secret itself, the wellspring itself, the one flowing out of himself. The Shaman Second Idea for Contemplation I have said what the word shaman means, an ancient person. A shamanic vision is attaining the second consciousness, the concealed supreme consciousness. The true shaman leans on the depth of the pure perception. We are speaking of the deep intuition and not of hunches. When the world must be changed, the shaman changes their perception, and in this way they transform their correlation to everything around them. The shaman is able to pour themselves into and to connect to the boundless force. I have said, energy is everywhere, the force is not, the force must be summoned. For the shaman, some mere rules of medicine are not important, here the spirit is important. The shaman is a sacred person composed of spirit and truth. When the shaman unites with the mighty powers of the spirit, healing happens and they are allowed to enter there precisely because they are a sacred person. The way of acquiring power is purification, because through it the shaman becomes a pipe. They call it a pipe, a channel, a channel of the supreme powers which become guides of our aim. The shaman sees things through the eyes of the supreme powers, shaman is totally open for the guides and for God, and totally locked for the world and for the inferior beings. They have been trained this way. This is many reincarnations training in the sacred life. For the shaman, the dream is a real occurrence, and most often they are not asleep while they dream. They are awake, 
and living through and reorganizing realities. The shaman says, when I cry for someone, I touch them with my eyes. The shaman is a guide in the sacred because they themselves are such. The true shaman is touched by God, by the great spirit, and people around them feel this. This is a real touch. The great essence has touched the small essence, the person. We are speaking of just one touch. A small particle, says the Master, one hundred millionth. It is already enough to walk in this way. The most supreme shamans, besides with the ancestors, they could also meet directly with the Creator Himself when it was especially necessary. They do not seek Him. They have guides, advanced beings, the ancestors, i.e. the gods. But there are exceptional cases when the gods cannot help and then they guide the shaman to God. And the shaman asks for advice and for a method from God. The shaman, when they enter deeply enough within, is given power, calmness and guidance. The true shaman will help you and ask for nothing in return. The shaman is happy with this, that they have done good. They receive merit from good itself, not from you. You could hardly give something to a person like this, who has received their secret completeness. In order to reach true healing, one thing is always required, a touch from the supreme power. This solves the matter. Whether this power wants to touch you and whether you are able to draw it towards yourself in such a way so that it touches you. The shaman heals with a boiling energy because the source is boiling. Not with ordinary prayers, but with mighty energy. Spiritual people use this energy to elevate themselves and the shaman is a living interaction with the sacred because they have chosen to serve the sacred. Therefore, there is real exchange. The Creator Lecture 3 If you begin to understand your spirit, the Creator will come to you. The One who has granted the Spirit. You are Spirit. You are a secret deeper than the world. When a friend of yours dies, then meetings happen, spirit to spirit. The conversation continues. Beings speak to each other eternally, life and death notwithstanding, despite distances. The Creator has given you pure spirit. The pure spirit within you can bring the sun to you even during winter. Drink water as golden waves gifted from the Creator. If you want to drink water with a nice feeling, you can imagine a Bedouin seeking it in the desert like a precious gemstone. And when they drink it, they drink in an exceptionally sacred way. Sometime I will tell you of the Bedouins, of their wisdom. They drink in a way which is hard for us to imagine, because they value it so much. And when we have so much of it, we begin to lose it. But we must not lose this feeling. The Creator has created us in such a way that the funeral is never mourning, it is returning into freedom. Deep within us is the Creator, our center, this center is the center of all things. Every day is sacred 
because all days come from the Creator. The human life is sacred and not mental. This is not religious life, a confused one. Religion is psyche, I have said, and spirituality is soul, and divinity, this is spirit. The secret of life is to know the sound of the Creator. The right actions will build you up themselves, and they will lead you to the Creator. It is not knowledge that matters, but attitude. Your attitude, your reverence towards things, this is what is important. The primary thing on the way towards the Creator is not in the ability but in the secret of the set goal. All religions are part of the Great Spirit. They are unity, and each person, in their own way, in this religion, must correctly understand purity and their way. The spiritual connection to the Creator is the power which lets people withstand difficult events. Without the Great Spirit, says one shaman, I am nothing. We all learn from one God. There are no two gods. There is no Lucifer. Lao Tzu says, in Tao, there was never any other power. Tao is the only one. This idea of Lucifer has created many headaches and people think that there is a second will. In the world, there acts only one will, and everything else is instruments. We are all learning from this one God. If you devote yourself to the Creator, everything else will come naturally. God walks with us on the roads of life. God does in us that which we never would have been able to do on our own. The Creator contains the whole power within Himself, but He likes to share it. No one can live in the right way if they are not in agreement with the sacred power given to us by the Creator. This sacred power is a special type of knowledge, like a key. This key sets energy in motion, and on a deeper level, power as well. Can the world be healed? Only the Creator can. Without Him, no. Without Him, the world resembles a hospital. The connection to the Creator is peace, liberation from the world and from all concerns of fear and survival. I will remind what the Master says. A person living for their mere survival can never be my disciple. And for a person who really loves truth very much, very honestly, survival falls away. They enter into the system of God, and God takes care of them. And when God is taking care of you, and when God is in the first place in your life, it is all the same whether you are in the desert, whether you are ill or healthy. For God, there are no obstacles. He becomes your true friend. Together with the Creator, everything is possible because He adds power to us from Himself. We may have some power, but we need his additional power. He gives it to us naturally. He completes us. Seeing means letting the supreme powers show you things through their eyes, which are the eyes of the Creator. There are cases when the shaman sees something, not from the supreme powers, but from the Creator himself. And then the shaman cries, beholding such magnificent beauty. This is something very beautiful. 
I know it from experience, because I know, in very difficult situations, when the Master was helping me, and when there was an intervention from God, these things are discernible, not because we know them, they are simply given through revelation, they are fine differences and levels. The Creator is an enormous white light, and when, says the shaman, I go to him, I go to visit this enormous white light. Evil is present only through the allowance of the Creator, and we survive only if we believe that we are close to the Creator. Together with the Creator and the helpers, the gods, everything is possible. When the present situation is heavy and hopeless, the Creator comes to take it into his own hands. This happens in many cases. The Creator and the Ancestors act within us when we really must heal someone. Then a sign appears. A mighty power flows into your energy. You are doing your prayers, your concentration, with your own experience. But he gives you something extraordinary, something exceptional. This is a sign of great unity. It means that things will happen. This is a living, vibrating, mighty energy, a peculiar state. There are beings who have been sent, who are boiling within you because this help is important and it has been allowed by God. This is a mighty vibration, a mighty divinity. This living power is support from the Creator. Besides, from the gods, it comes from Him as well. And this is transmitted to the sick person, and they have no choice already. They are healed. This is a mighty divine vibration, and the power of the Creator Himself. This power set in motion is fearsome. This is his power, and it does not matter who is opposite, a whole army or whatever it is, it has no adversaries. God's love never had adversaries. Healing requires a mighty energetic saturation of power. The Creator is the supreme overlord and allower of this power. He knows who must be sick who must be healed, and who must not be healed. Woe unto the person who heals someone who must not be healed. Wisdom Third idea for contemplation The Native Americans say, food has a much more important meaning that this to simply pass through you. There are spirits in it who keep watch, in the food itself. This is why there are people who love to eat frequently, because there are also calming spirits. But everything has its measure. After you have once tried something true, you will never again be satisfied with something else. The sacred person loves the quiet. They wrap it around themselves like a blanket. The strong quiet is like the voice of thunder, which discloses to them many secrets. If you want to go to the new land, you must make an arrow, and it must be straight, it must be perfect. The arrow, this is yourself. If you capture the fine words, you have understood many things. Understanding is the sensing of the intangible, of this which has not been said. When you possess spiritual knowledge, you can hear how colours sing, how flowers talk. In practice, not to some extent, this is given to you. 
your spirit speak very deeply, very purely, and very clearly. They never leave doubt in the person. If you connect to a transitory thought, as I said, it can carry you off the path. It can carry you off from life too. The sacred must be present in the ordinary things as well. One shaman says, I love those people who are honourable without laws. I love those people who adhere to the divine laws without having read them or heard of them. I love those people who honour God without Bible. Merits are measured by the pure loyalty towards God. What significance do the convictions of the scholar have? Once the matter is of God, what could an educated person say if they publish 100 books and if they come up with all sorts of terminology? They are not within this system. The Aymara Indians I will tell you something about them. A very peculiar tribe. They are the only ones in the world whose future is not ahead of them, but behind them. They believe that the future is backward, behind them. For them, the future is something which has not taken place, but is unclear, invisible. For them, the past is something in front, because it has been lived, and because it is ahead of them. It is before their gaze, it can be beheld. Because they behold it, it is in front of them. While the future is unclear, it remains somewhere behind. They wonder where time is. Like we spoke last time of Egypt, in the sacred words, there is no time, no createdness. This is another atmosphere, another dimension. They wonder where time is. For them, it is not important. For them, life was never time. For them, life is occurrences, lessons, not time. They are not attuned to time this tribe. They are not attuned to something external, but to a wave of events. For them, it is events that are important, and the leap within the spirit. They have no gaze for time, no hearing for it. They see the spirit and experiences, and their hearing is oriented only towards this. What does the Creator want to say? Though opinions are of no matter at all to them here, especially philosophers, scientists and religious people, they are interested in wisdom, no opinions whatsoever. For them, the Spirit is the deep voice because it comes from the dawn of life. They say, we were raised by this voice. We come from the dawn. For them, greeting the dawn means to touch the wellspring of life. By the way, in the dawn, there is something much deeper than in the sunrise. The sunrise and sunset are something pleasant but the dawn is something very deep, something very mystical. Exactly then, at the time of the dawn, whoever wants to attain the mystical knowledge, which is much deeper than the sunrise, there it is found, in these hours, and one of the secret elders as well. They say that when this wellspring touched the world, then the dawn appeared, such is the origin. The Creator has touched the dawn. You cannot paint the dawn. It is before the world. 
sunrise and sunset you can paint, but in the dawn there is something elusive, like in Egypt. They say of Ahet, Ahet means the horizon. You can see it, but you cannot touch it. Ahet means elusiveness. And everything originates from this great secret, from the dawn. This dawn was the eternal path of the sacred people. This dawn is the great origin of all times. It is before them. Aum.